Hey guys, we're here today. I ran upstairs uh, mainly because this week we're machining 68 valve bodies and wanted to give you an example of some of the stuff we're seeing. So I don't know if you can really pick it up in the camera, but you see the gradients here. This is the valve body portion of the 68 RFE. This is your channel plate portion. And then the two of them go together with the separator plate that goes between them. And you, obviously you can see all your hydraulic oil passages that kind of take place in there. Taking particular attention to this valve body, you see your low area, this is really typical of the 68 valve body, how much these castings warp. You know, they come out of the plant, originally they're aluminum, and go into a cycle, and you know, say you have it in the truck for three to five years, wood gets hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. If something that happens to aluminum, it really, you know, gets kind of comfortable, and it begins to move around, and, and over time, you know, the pieces begin to warp. And this is a perfect example of one of the primary reasons why the 68 RFE has such a terrible reputation for failure in hydraulic leaks because the actual integrity of the aluminum begins to warp you know when you have these two pieces put together this is an example of one after we machine it so one of the first things we do to any valve body which is really unique that we do that <clears throat> really we found nobody else does primarily because the amount of time it takes to machine these things is building the jig, setting them up <clears throat> taking a big rotary plate and going across them and it generally we take about 20 thousandths 17 to 20 we've seen that they generally will warp you know 13 to 15 thousandths so generally 17 thousandths of flatness will get them completely flat so we generally take each one of them about 20 thousandths so you get a totally flat surface then when you add your separator plate to it and you have the other part the channel plate and then you bolt these together then you get a 100 percent seal now, you know, there's a lot of manufacturers out there that are adding gaskets between the separator plate, which the gasket is definitely not a bad thing by any means. You know, the gasket really does help because it helps compensate for a lot of this warping that takes place on these two pieces. So, you know, you have 10,000 on this side, 10,000 on the other side. You have as much of the 20,000 variance. So when you do add the gaskets, it really does help with those cross flakes, but, you know, it really doesn't do the best job in the world. I mean, it's kind of equivalent to replacing head gaskets on a diesel that has a warped head, right? We know it works for a little while, but over time, it still blows out because you don't have the even clamping force. So taking the time to surface this area completely, assemble it, you know, with your nice thick separator plate, put the channel plate on it, get it all torqued into place, you know, really ensures that you have the integrity, the hydraulic integrity. If you have 200 PSI oil pressure in one port and you don't have any in the other, you want to make sure that you keep those things sealed up completely. So that's just a little bit of a tidbit, one of the things that we're doing today um, on our milling machine. So we've got about 100 valve bodies here that we're machining all the, all the surfaces on, and then we'll turn them up and we'll take care of all the accumulator bores, oversize them, cross hatch them, take care of the main valve, the lockup valve, put the steel valves in it, and then you'll have a valve body assembly that's completely machined, upgraded accumulators, upgraded spool valves, I'll put together with a thicker plate for the higher pressure, sealed up, then you have a complete valve body assembly. So those are uh, ready to roll for any upgrade 68 RP.